In the labyrinth of history, the tale of Alexander and King Porus beckons us to delve deeper. Beyond the well-worn narratives lies an intricate tapestry, woven with threads of conquest, resilience, and enigma. As Alexander's campaign swept through Persia, the allure of India beckoned. Some Indian kingdoms yielded to his might, forging alliances. Notable among them was Ambi of Takshashila, whose choice to stand with Alexander cast a shadow over the impending clash with Porus. Picture the scene, Alexander, on the cusp of the Hydasps River, faced a formidable challenge. The seasonal deluge rendered the river impassable. Undeterred, Alexander left a portion of his army as a diversion skillfully navigating a bend to outmaneuver Porus. This tactical brilliance set the stage for a clash that would echo through the ages. The muddy riverbank, saturated by rain, became the battleground. Porus's chariots, mired in the sludge, struggled against the relentless advance of Alexander's forces. A pivotal moment arrived as Porus's son led a valiant but doomed effort, meeting his fate in the chaos of war. Yet, Porus stood resolute, orchestrating his forces in a defensive stance against Alexander's relentless march. The revelation of war elephants, numbering around 200, added a dramatic twist. Initially, they trampled Alexander's soldiers, creating pandemonium. However, ingenuity emerged as javelins found their mark, targeting the vulnerable legs of the colossal creatures. As Alexander's reinforcements crossed the Hydasks, the tides turned decisively. Porus's army found itself encircled, caught between the relentless march of Alexander's forces and the onslaught from the rear. The once mighty army of Porus crumbled under the strategic brilliance of the Macedonian conqueror. In the aftermath, Alexander, standing amidst the battlefield strewn with remnants of a fierce clash, was struck by Porus's unyielding spirit, capturing Porus alive. He confronted the defeated king with a question that echoed through the ages, how did he wish to be treated? The response, dignified and regal, led to the unexpected return of Porus's kingdom. Yet, this epic saga, as captivating as it is, is a narrative handed down by Greek historians. The absence of corroborating evidence from Indian sources casts a shadow over its authenticity. Takshashila, a hub of intellectual discourse and a witness to history, remains conspicuously silent on the events that unfolded in its proximity. The enigma deepens as we explore the void in Indian records. While Greek sources paint King Porus as a potent ruler with a formidable army, Indian texts maintain a perplexing silence. The later invasion by Seleucus Nicator finds a place in the annals of Indian history, leaving us to wonder, why does Alexander's grand campaign, with all its triumphs and defeats, remain a muted melody in the symphony of Indian chronicles? The quest for answers takes us beyond the familiar narratives into the intriguing silence of history's recesses. In the labyrinth of historical intrigue, the tale of Alexander and Porus beckons us to unravel its complexities further. As we traverse the corridors of time, the connection between the northwestern region and the rest of India becomes a focal point. Gandhara's mention in historical records, coupled with the prominence of Takshashila as a hub for scholars, challenges the notion of isolated interactions. The silence in Indian records raises a poignant question, was there a deliberate exclusion of foreign kings, a tradition woven into the fabric of ancient chronicles? The contradiction emerges when we consider Seleucus Nicator's documented visit to India merely years after Alexander's conquest. The absence of Indian records surrounding the war with Porus becomes increasingly perplexing against this backdrop. Could it be that the clash, while dramatic, failed to reverberate beyond the northwestern borders? This seems improbable. Given the region's strategic importance in the northern trade route, the Mauryas, who rose to power in the aftermath, maintain an intriguing silence on the events, leaving us with more questions than answers. The possibilities multiply as we delve into the mysteries of the past. Did the war between Alexander and Porus transpire at all? The lack of local accounts challenges the authenticity of this event. Despite detailed Greek descriptions, Greek records, albeit vivid, remain secondary casting a shadow of doubt on the narrative. A compelling hypothesis surfaces, did Indian scholars purposefully overlook Alexander's incursion, deeming it inconsequential amidst the grandeur of Bharat's other kingdoms? This theory, however, falters in the face of the potential impact such an invasion could have had on the geopolitical landscape. The most tantalizing scenario emerges, suggesting that Alexander might have faced defeat at the hands of Porus. This idea reframes the narrative questioning the conventional depiction of Alexander's magnanimity in returning the kingdom. The tragic demise of Bucephalus, 
Alexander's loyal steed, in the heat of this battle adds emotional weight to the speculation. The enigma deepens with Alexander's abrupt decision to halt his world-conquering mission. Would a tyrant, driven by an insatiable thirst for power, truly relent due to the fatigue of his soldiers? The puzzle gains another layer of complexity with Alexander's mysterious death on the journey back, prompting speculation about the battle's lasting impact. In the quest for clarity, we confront the limitations of historical understanding. Greek records, while providing intricate details, remain one facet of a multifaceted narrative. The lack of primary Indian sources ensures that this clash between Alexander and Porus remains, veiled in the mists of history, a captivating mystery that continues to elude the grasp of time.